Hi, I'm Richard Rogers, and this is Wednesday night service at Unity Phoenix Spiritual Center, and I am so glad that you're with us. You know, we've been doing this five-week series on letting go. And for many of us, letting go is really a hard, it's difficult, it's challenging, and we want to hang on, we want to hold on to everything. But I'm going to make a case over the next few weeks that letting go is your way to be wildly and wonderfully blessed. So I'm glad you're with us tonight. We have an incredible music for again tonight, so thank you. And, and here we go. Let's move into our time of prayer and meditation. I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to feel the presence of God that's within you. And I want you to feel how deeply, profoundly blessed by God you are. That there is so much good, even during this time, and that our mind has the capacity to pivot. That we can either focus on what's good, or we can see all the problems, all the challenges, all the dysfunction in our world. Today we keep our eye focused on God. We keep our spiritual eyes focused on all the good that God is. We actually expand the good into every area of our life. Take another deep breath. Let go. Let go of the stories, let go of the drama, let go of the judgments, let go. And feel all that God is. All the good that God is. And that you were created in that level of goodness. You were created in perfect goodness. That the perfection of God is within you and all around you. And even in this time, as we focus on the good, we experience more and more God. As we focus on God, as we focus on the good, as we focus on the possibilities, we then are inspired to transform every situation. We don't deny what's going on in our world, but we allow the grace of God to lead us to a greater possibility. Take another deep breath. And let the fullness of God heal you, bless you, transform you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. power 
Fabuloso. Thank you. you guys are fabulous. Thank you, thank you. Rusty is always great. Craig, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great week. Thank you, guys. All right. Are you ready for this? What do you think is your greatest asset? And I'm not talking about your, your house or your car or your retirement plan. I'm talking about much closer to you than that. I'm talking about the you that created your life. I'm talking about internally. What do you think is your greatest asset? Do you think it's your intellect? Do you think it's the fact that you're a hard worker or that you're good looking or funny or charming or kind? Or is it your spiritual? What do you really believe is the greatest thing that you possess. You know, for me, I believe that it really is my spiritual nature, that my spiritual nature is the thing that really drives and animates everything else in my life, that it is the creative force that allows me to create everything in my life. And sometimes when we don't feel as valuable as we would like, when we can't really own our own sense of value or worth, one of the things that I've noticed is that we tend to create a lot of stuff around us to try to give us value. And that sometimes we are so committed to all the stuff around us thinking that the car or the house or the relationship or the job or, or, in re, or the amount of money that we have really will make us feel more valuable. But I truly believe that all of this comes from within. That as we really allow ourselves to feel our own inner value, that it really is the transformative power. That the, the, that the role of the Holy Spirit is to set us free from all the things that are no longer necessary so that we can find our true sense of worth and value right where we are. So last week we began a five week series on letting go. And, and this series isn't about just letting go of the external, it's about letting go of the external and those things within us, our thoughts, our fears, our beliefs that have kept us from living a, marg a full life experience. Those things that allowed us to live you know, a marginal experience. And, and letting go, it really is such a, a full and rich process of setting ourselves free of all those things that have limited us and that kept us down. You know, last week what I invited you to do was to let go of the past and let go of the future. That what we know to be true, that if we're willing to let go of our past and our future, it, the only thing we have left is the now moment. The only thing that we have is right here, right now. And that when we can fully enjoy right here, right now, we actually live in the highest level of abundance. 
reading from John 8.36. For if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So what's the benefit of letting go? Well, I've got three of them that I want to want you to play with. The first one is that as we let go of the externals in our life, as we let go of the attachment to the things in our life, we actually begin to discover more fully our essence. That sometimes when, when, I don't know if you've ever had this thing, that when you're, like when your office or your desk or your closet or your garage or your house, or your, there's so much junk in your life that sometimes all that stuff actually confuses the point that we actually get lost in the debris. And what I find that as we let go, as we let go of all the extra stuff, all the useless stuff, all the unnecessary stuff, we, it actually takes us back to our essence. It takes us back to the most important thing. And as we let go, it transforms the inner energy in our life so that we actually have the energy to create the life that we want, that all the stuff in our life actually takes up energy. And when we let go of all that unnecessary stuff in our life, it actually allows us to actually create the best, the highest, the thing that is actually soul satisfying to us. And the third benefit of letting go is that when we let go, it removes all the blocks that keep us from the flow of grace. It, it removes all the blocks that keep that flow of God's infinite energy moving in and through our lives. So today I want you to, there's five things, and I don't usually give you five things, and I know it's a lot, but today I'm going to give you five areas of your life, five aspects of your life where I'm going to invite you to let go so that you can make room to increase the flow of God, to increase the flow of good in your life. And the first one that I want you to let, let go of is I want you, and I know that this is a big one, right? I want you to let go of all the thoughts of the past. See, when we're constantly thinking about the past, we are actually connecting the, the, our present to our past. And when we actually stop thinking about our past, we can actually move into a moment and in that moment be blessed in a way that's greater than we can even imagine. But when every time we move into a moment, it move into an experience, and all we're doing is thinking about the past, we actually, actually pollute the present moment with the damage and the toxicity of the past experience. So imagine you're on a date, right? <laughs> now, if you're, if you're a married guy, I wouldn't suggest this activity. But, but if you're a single person, I want you to imagine you're on a date and that in this date, you bring all the baggage of all the broken, toxic relationships from your past and you bring it into that date. How much fun are you going to have? And more importantly, how much fun is the other person going to have when you bring all your garbage and lay it on the table and then try to have a good time? I'm going to tell you, it is not your wisest moment. Like to be fully functional as adults, we have to let go of the woundedness of the past. We have to let go. We have to stop thinking about it. Like if you, if you were to imagine experience with your family, and all you keep remembering is, is a tragic experience from the past. Can you imagine that, that any holiday, any event, any special occasion is going to be corrupted by the toxicity of the past? And, and over and over again, what we do is that we keep thinking about the past. We keep living from the past, and it really prevents us from moving into this moment. So what I'm going to invite you to look at is that instead of focusing on the past, I want you to really begin to move into focusing on your desire. And that takes us to number two. I want you to let go of not only of focusing on the past, but the worrying about the future. See, there, many of us are worrying right now about what's going on in our life and what's going on in the world. And what happens with worry is that it moves our focus off of what we desire. And, and many times we worry about the future simply because we don't have a solid vision for where we want to go in our life. We're not, we're not being led by a vision. We're not being called by a vision. We're not working toward a vision. We don't really have a vision for our future. So we tend to just spend a lot of time worrying about the infinite number of things that could possibly happen instead of really moving our focus to the future that we want to move into. So what I want you to see is the power that you have to pivot 
from your thoughts of worry about the future to your vision for the future that you want to live. And that pivot over and over again is one of the most powerful things that we can do because our mind has the ability to truly only focus on one thing at a time. We can only entertain one thought at a time. So then the challenge becomes, in this moment, am I going to focus on my worry about the future? Am I going to focus on my past? Or am I going to bring all my attention to right here, right now, and begin to empower the life that I want to live? And that as we move our, our, our focus to our present, to this moment, to the life that we want to create right here, right now, it actually sets us free. Three, I want you to let go of your story all your stories. I want you to let go of the stories that you tell about your past. Why? Why would I want, why do I care, right? What I want you to see is that your stories of the past define you. And we think, well, that's fabulous, right? Isn't that great? Like, this is who I am. This is who I was. I'm going to tell my story. And there's a great story. And in this story, you know, everybody either loved me or they hated me, or I was a, I was a giant or I was a fool. I was loving or I was hateful. When we tell our stories, what we're telling is the story of who we've been, but it's never the story of who we could be that our stories are just rehashing who we have been, the mistakes that we've made, the triumphs that we have, but it's just rehashing our past. What if today you were willing to no longer tell stories about who you've been? And instead of telling stories about yourself, what if you just got really curious? Like instead of telling stories about yourself, what if you just began to wonder who you could be? What if you could just live from that place of wonder? Because over and over again, what I want you to see is how much your life is defined by the stories that you tell over and over and over again about your past. And instead of living from those stories, what if today you just lived in, I'm curious. Would it be possible for me to do that? Would it be possible for me to live a greater life than I've ever lived before? Would it be possible for me to transform or to, to experience that level of love or joy or abundance? Would it be possible? Because what we know to be true is I don't think any of your stories of the past have captured the fullness of who God created you to be. That every one of your stories may be an aspect of your potential, but it's not the full story of your potential. And what if you got really curious about your potential and just began to wonder, what if? What if I could do that? What if I could fully embrace this moment? What if I could live in the abundance of God? What if I could be unconditionally loved? What if I could be happier than I've ever been before. Would you being happier than you've ever been before, would that be worth you giving up all the tired, old stories of your past? Even the positive ones. Because even the positive stories of your past are not big enough to hold all that God has created you to be. Would you be willing to let go of your tired, old stories to embrace the fullness of what God wants to do in your life right here, right now? Number four, would you be willing to let go of your judgments? Interesting thing happens when you judge, right? That you can't judge yourself or another with an open heart. I want you to try it. I want you to think of the favorite person, and it may be you, I want you to think of the favorite person that you love to judge. Does everybody have one? It could be somebody you see on the news, it could be somebody in your family, it could be a neighbor, it could be somebody out of your past, it could be your ex. I want you to think of the favorite person that you have to judge. The person that just gives you so much joy in, in just acknowledging how bad and wrong they are, right? I think most of us have that person. I think most of us have that person that we just love to judge because we get to feel right, we get to feel superior, we get to feel like, you know, they're just low-life scum or wherever we go, right? But we just love to judge them. I think most people have a person in their life that they just love to judge, that they're just so happy that that person is so awful. But what I want you to see is that you cannot judge yourself or another with an open heart. 
that instantly the moment your mind goes to judge somebody else, your heart closes. You can't do it. You literally cannot live an open-hearted life in judgment. That, that we're, we have to make a choice, moment to moment to moment, do I want to judge? And it's like, yes, I do want to judge. I want to judge that person. They are so wrong. They are so bad. They are worthless. They are a terrible human being. And I want to judge them. And it's like, so, so I get to be right, but my heart is closed. And what I know, what I believe to be so true is that every time my heart is closed, the amount of God, the amount of grace flowing through me instantly stops. That I can't live a blessed life with a closed heart. It just doesn't work. I can live from my head. I can go through the motions. I can be mechanical with my heart closed. But I can't be fully blessed. That if I'm willing to be fully blessed, I have to be willing to let go of my need to judge. I have to be willing to let go of the way that I use judgment to to separate myself from others. The way I use judgment to feel superior, better, or to make sure that other people know how wrong or bad they are. If I open my heart all the way and live with an open heart, I actually increase the flow of God into every area of my life. But I have to decide, would I really truly be willing to let go of judgment, all the judgments? that I've held about everybody, and open my heart and let the flow of God, the flow of good, the flow of grace into every area of my life, then I know what I'm asking today is difficult. I know that for some of us, we feel so vulnerable when we don't feel like we have permission to judge. It actually takes us to a very vulnerable place psychologically when we think all we get to do is love because some of us have believed that love just makes us stupid that we make bad choices in love, and I don't believe that. I believe that when we are full with love, when we're overflowing with love, we actually make higher, better choices, and that judgment over and over again keeps us out of the flow of God's good. Jesus said, judge not, lest you be judged. Would you be willing today to let go of your attachment to judgment, to increase the amount of good, to increase the amount of God, to increase the blessings in every area of your life. And I'm not saying that from time to time you're not gonna slip, but what I am saying is I want you to notice and, and really make judgment a slip, not your dominant way of showing up. That I want you just to be so free of judgment that the love and goodness of God flows through you in ways that bless you, your family, our community, our world in, in really wonderful and amazing ways. And what do I want you to see today? That I truly am asking you to give up judgment as an option, as a style of living, as a way that you confront the things that you think are wrong or bad in the world. And I'm going to ask that instead of judging, you choose to live from an open heart fully, completely, an open heart. And five, the last one I want to share with you, is what if today you let go of all the shoulds? I should do this, I should live like this, I should get this done today, I should be this, or I should be that, or I should act like this, or should dress like that, or I should have more money in the bank than I do, or I should have made a better choice about this or about that. And I, and I want you to see all the shoulds. And I want you to see how much the shoulds actually keep us out of the flow of God. And in fact, every day, this is your homework. I, I know I've given you one for every, every aspect of it, but, but here's the ones for the should. I want you every day to start your day, and it only takes five minutes. I want you to start your day every day by writing all the, th- the shoulds down, Right? And it could be 10 or 15 or 20 things that you think that you should. I should exercise. I should eat right today. I I should get this project done at work. I should make sure that that I check on, you know, whatever it is, right? The phone calls, the errands, the activity. And I I want you to write down all the shoulds that you think you need or you should do every day. And I want you to just look at how long that list is, right? Just all the, the, the ways that you should on yourself. Right? And I just want you to see all the ways, all the things that you think you should do every day. And then I want you to just park that list, right? Because what I want you to see is that when we have this long list of all the things that we should do, it actually prevents us from living by grace. 
And, and instead of living from all the things I should do, I want you to actually open your life to grace. I want you to open your life to God. And I want you to begin to ask yourself every day after you've written down all the things you should do that day, and, and if you do this day after day for a week, what you're going to notice is that list gets much shorter. But as you write down all the shoulds that you should do when you get to the office or what, what you're supposed to do with your kids or your life or whatever, and then I want you to say, but God... What do you want me to do today? If I'm going to live today in grace, what do you want me to do? What am I being called to do? What is the divine guidance within me asking me to do today? And now I want you to write down those one or two or three things. Because what happens for most of us is that we get so active in all of our shoulds, right? We, we've got to get this done and this done and this done and this done. And then by about three quarters or halfway through the list, we're so exhausted from living from our shoulds that we never get to the most important list. We never really get to the list that God wanted us to do that day. And so what happens is day after day after day, the most important things go undone because we're trying to get this monster list of shoulds done. And what I want you to see today is I want you to write all those down to acknowledge this because until you write them down, your ego is going to fixate on them. Your ego is going to come back to them over and over and over again. They're going to just like be a little pebble in your shoe and, you, and your mind's going to keep coming back to them. So if you actually write them down and acknowledge that you actually saw them. I don't know if, you, if you've ever had a toddler, a child as a toddler, I, you know, one of the things that they do is, is they'll, they'll just grab your clothes and kind of tug on you till they get your attention, you know, or they'll whine or they'll do whatever they want. And, and you know, if you're busy, if you're getting, trying to get something done, if you're working around the house or whatever, they will just continue to nag at you until they feel like they get your undivided attention. And the moment you turn and give them your undivided attention, sometimes they, they really have no idea what they wanted. Or if they do remember what they wanted, once they get your undivided attention, there's something in them that just calms down. It's like, oh, well, we can't do that right now, but we can do that later. And they just stop. And what I want you to see is that's the same way with your ego. That once you listen to your ego and write down all the things you should, your ego feels like you've heard it. But then I want you to turn and say, okay, God, the Spirit of God in me, what does God in me want me to do today? And I want you to see that as you begin to live more and more from this list, you begin to live by grace. That over and over again, our thoughts get in the way of us living by grace. So this week, your job, in a, in a very real way, is to let go of your thoughts. Let go of your fears. Let go of your stories. Let go of your judgments. Let go of your shoulds. And simply live by the grace of God. Take a deep breath. I want you to feel that. The, the first week we focused on letting go of the past and letting go of the future. Today, I want you to let go of your thoughts, your judgments, your shoulds, your stories. And I want you just to be present in this moment to the grace of God. That the moment you let go of all that mental confusion, all that mental upset, all that mental busyness, what you discover is there's a calm peace in your soul and that God will guide you and direct you and bless you in a way that's profound. But our busyness and our mental chatter and our mental activity actually keep us from a deeper level of peace and living wildly blessed. So take a deep breath. Let's take this into prayer. Today I just let go of my thoughts. I let go of all my thoughts. I let go of all the stories and all the shoulds and all the fears and all the judgments. I just let it all go. And I let there be a quietness in my soul. Maybe a deeper quietness than I've ever known before. And in this place of quiet, I can respond to the activity of God. I can respond to grace. I can respond to, to guidance and direction. I can be inspired. I can be lifted higher. Today I let myself become still and at peace. 
and I walk in the grace of God. So in the name and through the power of the living Christ, today I let go of my thoughts. All my thoughts. I let go of everything. And I find the stillness of my soul. And so it is. Amen. All right, this is the time of giving of our gifts and tithes. I invite you to hold them in your hand as we bless them together. And our affirmation is very simple. We're using the simplest one. It's really the old school one if you've been in unity for a long time. And it's divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Let's say that together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And so it is. Amen. God bless you, friend. I am so glad that you're a part of this ministry. And, and I want you to know how committed we are to supporting you as you walk through this time. That I promise that this time is not going to last forever. That there is a higher level of good that wants to be made manifest through each and every one of us. And that we can rise together to really experience all the good that God has for us. God bless you, friend. Have a great week.